Hello everybody. Today we are getting our final interval, the major seventh. We're also going to talk about something called combinatoriality. Don't worry, we'll get there in a second. Um, so yeah, we're going to do the same thing that we've been doing. We're going to start off with some little um, little exercises to get minor, uh, major sevenths in our ear. We'll then look at a longer melody and kind of dissect it apart and kind of talk our way through it so you know how to practice it and how to go forward. We'll then conclude with our final trichord operation, um, and I'll explain that in a little bit. And then that'll be it. So uh, let's go ahead and get right into it. Warm up. Let's just start off with a major scale, relaxed and groovy. One, two, major scale. Okay, let's go here. Let's go ahead and do harmonic minor. One, two, ready, go. Sing this. Oh, boy, oh boy. Sing that, please, on La. Here, a major seventh above. Yeah, okay. Quite far. Major sevenths are very far, okay? But remember, when in doubt, think of an octave and then go down a half step, okay? Here we go. Sing this note on La, please. Hear a major seventh above in your head. Okay. Sing this note on La. Or let's do this note on La, please. Here a, my, a major seventh below. Major seventh below. Yeah, I think going down is quicker than going up. And when you're going down, you want to think of it as being like. Think of an octave, but then bring it up a half step. Okay, so major sevenths. Now, um, this top part, we've got a couple different exercises here. Uh, cell one and two are major sevenths followed by uh, minor seconds. Right, so we've just got octaves separated by half steps in each direction. This kind of, um, it's like, like, do, T, Do, and then Ra, Do, so to speak, right? Descending in number two, we start Do at the top, or pardon me, well, it could be Do, or C, or Zero, or La. Just the opposite of what we did in number one. Now number three provides this kind of sequential passage you could try out. So we start on G for instance, major seventh up, whole step up, major second down, or pardon me, major seventh down, major second up, major seventh up. Um, the pattern breaks a bit, but kind of a useful exercise to do is kind of doing these passages that kind of That kind of thing to get really wide interval practice in something useful to consider um let's take a look at number 11 so the second staff here boom um we start off with an ascending major third right from there we have there's our major seventh right it descends by a whole step descends by another major seventh right bit tricky and then ascends by minor third, okay? Okay, 12 is a little, is, is very similar, but differs a bit, differs a bit. So take a look at number 12, takes 30 seconds, starts on the same pitch, starts on um, A or La or La or nine. Okay, take 30 seconds and look over number 12. Okay, try this out. 
Okay, I'm gonna give you uh, two beats in your end. Ready? Oh, pardon me. One, two. So, differs a little bit from number 11, right? We start off similarly, major third up, major seventh up. Oh, pardon me. Fingers are all jammed today. Here we go. Right? This The B sharp is a C, okay? We descend by half step, another major seventh, right? There's that kind of pattern we talked about before. Ascends by tritone. Right? Okay? A little bit tricky, but I th again, I still think major sevenths are a bit more accessible than minor sevenths, just because you can kind of contextualize within an octave, so to speak. Um, 20 starts off with a whole step up, try tone up. From there we go down a major seventh, major third up. So we kind of um, end just adjacent to where we, where we began. Okay, good one to practice. 21, major third up. And then we have a major sixth up, right? We get this kind of minor ninth impression there. Okay, up to C, down a major seventh. Try tone up. Yeah, yeah, 21, little, little tricky, little tricky with, with the, the, the sixes in there and the thirds and the tritone. Um, 22, let's take a look at this one. Descend by major third this time. Descend by major sixth this time. Descend by minor second this time. Up a major seventh. Down a minor third. Almost an inverted version of 21, almost. Okay, uh, good ones to practice. Good ones to practice. This this whole page are are, are useful. Um, again, major seventh. The biggest thing I think is is not so much hearing the pitch, but the range of singing that wide of an interval. Um, it can get a little bit tricky, and and because of the nature of these intervals, now we're going to see music that's very hard to sing within comfortable ranges. So having octave equivalents in mind and being able to revert would be useful. So for instance, if um, this D flat down to C is too far, you can shift these both up an octave like this. Right? You can kind of modify it all to be within a tritone instead of within, um, oh boy, let's see, within a ninth. So, something to consider. Now, here's a melody, here's a longer melody, like what we've been doing in previous uh, weeks and lectures. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk through how to sing this. I'm gonna talk you through the process um, and again, I would encourage you to go and practice this. Um, this is the kind of prep that you would want to do before your prepared singing, which we'll be having next week. Okay? So, uh, we do start and end on C. There is kind of a nice, uh, you know, overall symmetry there. Uh, we do have these changing meters, but the rhythms aren't that crazy in this one. We start right off the bat with our major seventh. Descend by a major second. Tritone, or no, pardon me, minor third, what am I talking about? Minor third minor sixth. If you look at that, we've got minor third, minor sixth. That's that pattern that we had last week in the minor sixth chapter that is just two intervals that combine to make your major seventh. Right? From the rigo down to min uh, major third, major second. And then another major second. Okay. This kind of whole tony type sound to it. From there we ascend up a minor second, and then a minor sixth. Or no, pardon me, beg your pardon, beg your pardon, cleft confusion. Major seventh here, from the E flat to the D. And then we bring that E flat up to make it a minor seventh, right? So, a little bit tricky, we've got major seventh and minor second at play there. Descend by a minor third, okay? This is measure four. There's your minor seventh again. 
From there we go up a fourth, minor third, almost like a minor triad type sound. From here we go up a major seventh again, from measure five to measure six. Descend by third, descend by major seventh. Right? So this here is particularly tricky, but it is just two major sevenths separated by a third in the middle. Right? From there, we ascend up a sixth, a major sixth. Descend a fifth. Okay? This is measure eight now. We're down a half step. And here we have a major seventh again. Resolves down a half step, down a minor third. Okay? Then we reset in measure nine. We change the pitch now. So we have the same starting interval of a major seventh here and here, right? But now instead of going down a half step, we go down a whole step. Still go down a, major, a minor third, minor second, right? So measure six is kind of a false start. Uh, pardon me, measure eight is like a false start. Measure nine tries again, and then we eventually resolve back down to the D in measure 10. So here's measures uh, eight, nine into 10. That sounds almost modal, almost tonal for a second there. So measure 10, the most activity that we have rhythmically in the entire piece, we've got our another major seventh that we've had in measure nine and in measure eight. So before we went down a half step in measure eight, down a whole step in measure nine, in measure 10 we go down a third now. Up a fourth. Now this is a bit tricky because we've got third here, second here, third here, fourth here. Um, oh, now I'm getting clef confused. Oh my gosh. 10 again, 10 again. Up to E flat, up to C flat, which is B, minor, major third down. Okay, from C down to A is a major second. From A down to E is a fourth. Down a whole step, down a half step. And then finally, one additional major seven. Now, measure 10 is the most complicated measure that we've seen so far in the entire quarter because it's got tons of different intervals that are all going in a certain direction but aren't following kind of a regular pattern that makes it very tricky for sight tuning purposes. So in this passage, we've got things that recur like this motive here that comes back and is modified each time. Um, over here, we've got kind of these sevenths compounded by intervals in the middle. This beat two and three of measure 10 is the most complicated thing that we'll kind of see where we've got f intervals going in a continuous direction that aren't building on motives that aren't in a regular pattern. Um, quite tricky stuff. So we've got this, um, very tricky, very tricky. So, um, I'm going to play the whole melody for you now. Um, I would encourage you to try to sing along, uh, but if not, you can use this as a reference to come back and practice this. I would highly, highly recommend practicing this. Um, and again, if you're struggling with major sevenths, there's more examples in modus novus at this point. Chapter 11, the repertoire chapter, we've covered everything that would prepare us for the repertory. Um, and of course, office hours, as always. So. Measure 10 is a nasty piece of work. So I would definitely practice measure 10, even if you just practice this measure on its own. Very useful for singing something that's a pretty complicated post-tonal line that has a lot of different intervals in it, okay? Excellent practice. So um, I wanna conclude today by talking about um, combinatoriality. It's like a tri-chord operation, kind of, okay? So um, it's not an operation that happens on tri-chord, a tri-chord, it's an operation that happens between tri-chords. And the reason why I'm even mentioning this is because we haven't spent 
time with 12 tone music, right? We haven't sung 12 tone music. We've been singing freely atonal music, right? 12 tones its own kind of thing. So we're not going to really get into 12 tone music, but this is a way to connect our melodic singing and our interval singing with our trichord identification and to be as transparent as possible, you will not be assessed on combinatoriality. This is just kind of a theoretical concept that is combining all of these elements of our post-tonal, both singing and, dict and melodic dictation with our harmonic and trichord dictation. So, as I said, this isn't really an operation per se. Um, certain trichords, when operated on, can be combined together to form larger sets. And for instance, this is a way that we can get into the 12 tone method where you build a row that has all 12 pitches in a regular configuration and you don't repeat any pitches before you get to the end. So for instance, I'm gonna play this row for you now. This is a row that I took from repertoire. This is from Webern's Concerto Opus 24. We can break up this row of 12 pitches, unique pitches that all have every pitch is represented once. We can break this up into four different trichords. Now what's interesting about this is that trichord A, the very first pitches, becomes the basis for the rest of them. If we take trichord A and retrograde invert it and transpose it, we get trichord B. Right? It's kind of like to reorder some things to make them a little bit easier to hear the difference. Trichord C is just trichord A, retrograde and transposed. So, right, retrograde. Trichord D is trichord A, inverted and transposed. So we've got all of our operations happening here to generate a row. So trichord D, of course, would be, if this is trichord A, Trichord D would be, see, inverted. And what this means is all trichords in this are modifications of 014, right? If we were to take 014 and transpose it and modify it in different ways, that's a way that we can get all of our pitches, okay? Um, and that's what Webern has done here. So by combining, by modifying 014, Okay, this is an 014 that's been reordered and it's been transposed, of course, but it still is 014. All of these in prime form are just 014. They all have a semitone and a major third. See? Semitone, major third. Semitone, major third. Major third, semitone, semitone, major third. Right? Um, and then you can see this on a clock face, too. So if we go from B, B flat, D, right? There's our third, there's our fourth motion. If we go E flat, G, there's our third. F sharp, there's our semitone. If you were to draw this on a clock face, you'd have the same shape uh, for every single trichord. Um, for the third trichord, we have A flat slash G sharp, E, so there's our fourth. F, there's our minor second. And then finally C, C sharp, there's our minor second. C sharp to A, there's our fourth, okay? And by doing that regular pattern, you get all 12 pitches represented. Um, in different configurations, that still sounds musically interesting. It doesn't sound as, as uh, repetitious as if you just did transpositions of 014. It makes it a little bit more musically interesting. Okay, so um, I would recommend trying to sing through this and seeing what it feels like. You can kind of uh, embody the 014 being operated on in these different contexts. And this is a way to get into 12 tone music. Um, one way in. This isn't the only way to create rows, of course, but this is one way to do it that builds on all of our knowledge of trichords and trichord operations and how they map on to, um, and how they map on to 12 to music as a whole. Because uh, 12 to music, for like matrices, for those of you that have studied 12 to music and, and serial music, matrices, for instance, are organized in tables that have prime forms, uh, retrogrades, inversions, and retrograde inversions. All of our trichord operations, but scaled up from cardinality three sets to cardinality 12 sets to, tw to 12 tone rows. So just a way to get in, um, to kind of combine all of these different strands in a way that hopefully is kind of building a more competent schema of post-tonal music. So um, trichord combinatoriality, a really interesting, contact, uh, uh, um, a really interesting concept 
Um, go listen to the Webern Concerto and um, see if you can kind of pick out where all of those fourths and minor seconds are. It's a really, really fun exercise to do. So, um, next time, dictation, okay? Trichords, melody, chord construction. We're going to do four trichords. We're going to do a whole review, um, end of the quarter review of like, here's trichord dictation. We're going to do a melody um, as practice. And then we're going to, of course, do one final modus novus construction. Um, this is basically our last day of new material for the entire quarter because Friday's all just dictation. So we did it. Congratulations. Um, reminder that participation is due Friday, chapter 11, number 15, chapter 11, 25. I gave it to you on Monday because they're longer. I wanted to give you a bit of a head start. Um, but now that we've gotten our major sevenths down, there is no interval, no aspect of 15 or 25 that should be um, confusing or um, unfamiliar to us at this point. We've gotten all that we need to be successful with those two um, preparations. So that is it. Um, we're very rapidly uh, approaching the end of the quarter. Um, it's been quite a journey, and uh, I'll see all of you one final time on Friday.